hello guys and welcome back to my channel firewall can in this video we are going to talk about SSL and TLS protocols SSL and TLS protocols are one of the important reason why we get hacked I am going to show you why and how and also going to explain how this protocol works and what are the things we need to consider while applying these protocols into the organization so guys stay tuned and watch this video till the end how to stay top of TLS attacks today there is a need to stay top of TLS attacks with SSL certificates TLS stand for transport layer security and SSL stand for secure socket layer these are the protocols used to ensure data confidentiality privacy security and integrity whenever we trying to communicate over internet this protocol gives us security in terms of confidentiality and integrity these protocols we use in certificates to ensure security but unfortunately these protocols also being attacked by threat actors who take benefit of SSL TLS vulnerabilities and the only way to stay top of these attacks is to deploy the best SSL certificates for websites and the best SSL certificate for website uses the most secure version of SSL which is TLS 1.3 before discussing why the TLS 1.3 is better let's discuss challenges with the earlier version which are TLS 1.0 O and TLS 1.1 so all SSL protocols and TLS 1.0 and 1.1 are already deprecated by all the browsers compliance framework such as PCI DSS due to the their gapping security holes TLS 1.0 and 1.1 rely on broken hash function SHA-1 and MD5 making it easy for attacker to perform impersonation attacks and downgrade attacks so the only offer here is weak cryptography which is incapable of assuring the highest level of data security integrity and privacy TLS 1.0 and 1.1 and SSL protocols require the implementation of legacy cypher suit that only widen attacks surface TLS 1.0 and 1.1 contain TLS and SSL vulnerabilities such as Brown, Biz, Poodle, Sweet32, Heartbleed, Crime, Lucky3, etc. Attacker exploit this vulnerability to deliver several damaging TLS attacks and HTTPS decryption. Website continue to use certificates with these deprecated protocols will be flagged and marked as not secure through the address bar or full page warning this negatively impact brand image and customer trust and confidence now let's talk about the TLS 1.2 TLS 1.2 is still running in the security world it's 8 to deprecate still browser uses 1.2 but the TLS 1.2 have vulnerability that allows attacker to deliver man-in-middle attacks called recon attacks to obtain session keys and infiltrate encrypted data now let's see why TLS 1.3 is better TLS 1.3 does not support outdated vulnerable algorithms and cyber suits and it necessitates using more recent and stronger cyber suit and hashing algorithms also using TLS 1.3 reduce number of negotiation involved in TLS handshake and simplified the key exchange process thereby reducing the time required to establish the handshake TLS 1.3 necessitate AEAD bulk encryption instead of block mode cypher which have known vulnerabilities and flaws TLS 1.3 gives robust cryptography algorithms and keys as the most secure SSL certificate use strong cryptography algorithm and keys they use 2048 to 4096 bit sized 
keys for asymmetric encryption and 128-256-256 bit size keys for symmetric encryption. Note, keys which are smaller than this range is not secure. Plus, the best part of TLS 1.3 is the SSL certificate for the website uses SHA-2 hashing algorithm instead of SHA-1 algorithm which is prone to collision attacks. Using TLS 1.3, they allow additional elliptical curves to further strengthen the security. Also, you can deliver certificate management very smoothly using TLS 1.3. So the conclusion is that the best SSL certificate for a website are effective against all kind of SSL and TLS attacks and which will help you to stay ahead of the attacks. But now consider having these algorithms and security available with the TLS 1.3 still organization are not implementing 1.3 there's a reason to this guys because organizations runs if the organization is product based organization and they run their products the products which we they have designed earlier they may be based out of the older cyber suit which supports tls 1.0 1.1 or 1.2 because of that they need to carry out older TLS algorithms but that is vulnerable and because of that you know the attacker take advantage and do the attacks and how SSL and TLS protocol works handshake is a process to establish communication between client and server to understand how SSL and TLS protocol works, we need to understand how SSL and TLS protocol handshake works. Before talking about the handshake, let's understand the messages that compose the handshake process. The messages are client hello, server hello, server key exchange, server hello done, client key exchange, change cipher spec and finished. Now we are going to see a step-by-step -step process of how SSL and TLS handshake actually happens. So number one, the first message is the client hello message. Since the client machine is requesting the secure communication session, basically this message involves a set of options that the client is willing to use in order to communicate with the server. The option category are version of SSL to be used, cipher suit supported by the client and compression methods used by the clients. Other information that is included in the message is a 32 byte random number that assists the client in establishing encrypted communication and session field which is generally blank and which later on filled by the server. And Step server hello. The second message of SSL handshake is the server hello. In this message, the server make choice based on the client hello message. The server returns the five fields just like the client hello message and fills in the session ID and make firm decision on the version of SSL to be used and the compression method and cipher suit. The date and timestamp replaces four byte of the random number field to avoid repeated random values. Step three, server exchange message. This, at this step, the server made decision for the transmission of data. Now information must be passed between the client and server to determine how data will be encrypted. So still now no algorithm has agreed upon. So whatever information exchanging still this stage sent with no encryption. Now server's public key is used to encrypt a separate session key to be maintained. Have this communication secure. 
and now both the client and server will use this same key to encrypt data to be transmitted generally to ensure that the communication policies are who they claim to be a digital certificate used for this identification basically digital certificates contain public key to certification authority like rsa security or verisign and expiration date so that the person receiving the digital certificate can verify the link between the certificate owner and the certification authority it is important to note these certificates only contain the public key and should never include the private key otherwise the private key would be compromised and the entire purpose of having the digital certificate would widen step 4 message for server hello done Once the server has completed the server key exchange message the client receive a server hello done message to indicate that the server is through with the messages it is similar to the two way radio conversation when the sending party says over to announce that he is done sending a message and signal receiving party to acknowledge the message that was sent step 5 message 5 client key exchange this is a stage when attacks like a man in the middle can take place and can be mitigated since ssl and tls does not require a client to have public and private key in order to establish ssl session the client exchange message contain information about the key that the client and server will use to communicate step 6 chain cipher spec the two chain cipher spec message signal the change of data transmission from an insecure state to secure state at each computer in the cipher spec message its side of connection into the agreed upon state and the last message and the last step is finished the two message signaling the final message of the ssl handshake ensures that three things are verified before the initial handshake is complete these are key information contents of all previous ssl handshake message exchanged by the system a special value exchanging whether the sender is a client or a server at the end of this handshake process the user will see a lock icon in the corner of his or her browser to indicate that the secure connection is established and this is how the tls and ssl protocol handshake works